Sean Sport in podcast form. We're going to start off with some swimming, actually. Um, Canadian swimmer Summer McIntosh is 16. Amazing. Yeah. Now, she's competing at the uh, national championships for her nation. She beat Ariana Titmus' 400-metre record by half a second. Yeah. It uh, blows your mind to think who is out there that can do amazing things that we don't know about yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there could be someone that's younger and faster than her, and we don't yeah. know about them. Well, she'd been floating or floating around, huh? yeah. um, but uh, all of a sudden she just she's hit that age. I think when she's making massive progress very quickly. So you know she was runner up to Katie Ledecky at the World Championships when um, when uh, Ariane wasn't there, and then uh, she was I think top three in the Olympics too or Com Com Games Com Games. So she's like she's been up she's, there, she's but all of she she was kind of you know, coming third or whatever. Now she's the fastest in the world overnight. Unbelievable, isn't it? isn't it? And 16, you think about all yeah. the kids who are out there and there's plenty of mums and dads yeah. in the car now. Actually, not in the car. They would have taken them an hour and a half ago. That's how yes. well, dedicated she's... they have to be for yeah, swimming. At... I know, but they're, 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 that's their slow children. At 16, <laughs> she's still swimming in school carnivals. Imagine that. Oh, oh, that's imagine imagine jumping up on the, on, the, on the blocks and you're next to the world record holder. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and yeah. your school swim meet. Yeah. Oh. Just most of the parents that did just drop their kids off know that it's probably not going to be a world title. When, is, where no, did no, they no. drop them you know off, I mean? Nathan? Oh, yeah. To the pool. <laughs> <laughs> just just know that, you know, you're probably, oh, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're you know, about, you're probably having, about to go and They're having pick them fun. Up. They're having fun, but there's no end game to this. No. <laughs> there's no. no pot at the end of the <laughs> Almost rainbow. all of you, they're not going <laughs> to make it. Yeah, yeah, I might as well get them out I just tell them, like, look, let's just chuck them in a hot shower. Let's just nod and say we did. Tomorrow, let's just sleep in, eh? Don't you think? But don't you think, don't you really, I do know that you have to, you know, look at what your your child's passionate about, but like, at the end of the day, when it's something like getting up this early to take a kid to swim training, you have to go, okay, really? Are we going to go to the Olympics? Are you going to be a world champion? No. Let's not do this. <laughs> I just wish that Let's parents an, had the I'll right it, to no. do that. Let's get, get an afternoon hobby. You know? our pa- I'm sorry, our parents did that. Oh, straight away. If they had to lift too no. many fingers, they're like, no. Nah, You're no, not going to yeah, be good at that. Get on your bike. Off yeah. you go. Yeah. Well said. Danny Green was one of those swimming parents. He yeah. Have to do that. Yeah, Chloe. yeah. Chloe's She's an outstanding great um, open, open water swimmer. Mm. Anyway, moving on to um, yesterday, a lot of the news was to do with Peter Boll. He was on most of the stations and his lawyer, Paul Green, who was just absolutely taking the Australian Sports Drug Agency to town for their incompetence. I'm not surprised. This is just a little bit of what uh, Paul Green had to say about Peter Boll's circumstances yesterday. This is a, a, a subjective analysis, and they just couldn't they couldn't get it right. They had no idea what they were doing. And the worst part of it now is, one, it was announced, first of all, which never should have been, and I begged them not to announce it. And two, now that they just obviously are wrong, they are refusing to drop this sham investigation. They have absolutely no evidence at all at this point uh, as to any wrongdoing. And people cannot be convicted under the World Anti-Doping Code system or any system on just shadows and whispers. They have to have actual evidence and there is none what's disgusting about this is when this story first broke i remember we spoke about it and um and like i believed him since day one but it puts a shadow of doubt over him and this story now is attached to his name when you google it yes forever the fact that they're not backing down is attached to him so it's cast for people that want to be doubtful of him it cast doubt of their i completely agree with the lawyer this should never have seen the light of day until there was confirmation. Yeah, until right. you've tested both samples for starters. Never should have seen the light of day. But if, if for anybody, that's that's the way it should just be. Yeah. Like, oh, it's ridiculous. If that's, if that's the process, if the process is adverse finding in one sample, test the second sample to see if it matches, then the process has to be completed before you release the results. 100%. In what world? Do they... He's unable to compete at the World um, Championships because yeah, he's not ready. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, Australian of the Young Australian of the Year. He missed out on out that. Out the door. His reputation. His reputation. He's had to go on SAS Australia to... Forever today, people still to... take the piss out of him. Like, there'll be yeah. jokes, you know, yeah. for here on in. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot riding on oh, the yeah. line here. There yeah, is yeah, a yeah. huge, Sponsorship. huge lawsuit Money for his whole family. if he chose to go down Oh, you that. would think so. Like, there is a huge lawsuit from his um, uh, potential income. Yeah, that lawyer's going to be busy. Um, <laughs> he could talk, reputation. though. <laughs> like, hey, that talk? was a snippet. He went for about two yeah. minutes and did not take a He's break. Well, good. He was just flying the flag. Peter Boll is such a lovely bloke. He's really, really, really lovely. He's kind. He's gentle. And um and like I like I said I didn't know I you know, I don't know him too well I've done a few yeah things you've done with a few him. things with him but um I, I believe I believed him from day dot like you know but then again I suppose there's some really evil people out there that are very believable too. <laughs> um, but Peter Bowles not one of them yeah um he was a beacon for Australia through that 100%. whole Olympics 
Hun- for what, us, remember, but remember both, how uh, the Japan? entire country stopped down yes. for yes. his 800 metre final at the Olympics. Like did we was... claim him here in Perth? Oh, well, oh. he's a Perth boy. Yeah. That's why. Fantastic. Good luck to Peter Boll and his <laughs> comeback. He's just started training again. Um, he's going to be on hopefully... SAS Australia. How do you feel about that? I uh, think he's better than that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think SAS Australia and shows like that are at the end of your career when no one's ringing. Do you reckon yeah. he's, from a, from a managing point of view, maybe they were thinking, oh, we got to get your yeah. name back out there in a positive way? Oh, well, well, he would have done that while he was suspended. Yeah. So yeah. I guess he had some downtime. And not knowing, not knowing how, how what the result end. was going to be, yeah. But then again, it might have been the big chunk of money that they attached to it as yeah, well. Yeah, you know what I mean. Then Daddy goes away there. Well, I'm not going to be running anytime yeah. soon. So yeah, take what I can get. Oh, it's always a great day to start the day by chatting to our good friend Justin Langer, absolute superstar. And we're going to be talking cricket in a second, JL. But I wanted to mention the Kyle Andrews Foundation, which you've been patron for for quite some time. Oh, yeah. What a what a foundation, Mac. It's um. The first little boy I met with leukaemia, he was from Broome, yep. uh, Kyle Andrews, and his dream was to take all the kids from back then, Ward 3B at PMH, just before he passed away, um, up to Broome. And we've had this Kyle's camp going for nearly 25 years now, um, and the Kyle Andrews Foundation is absolutely it's magnificent. I love it. The Broome community, they've got a big night on Saturday night at the Netherlands Yacht Club. If anyone can, wants to get down there, great prizes, great music, and for an unbelievable cause, the Kyle Andrews Foundation. So something very dear my, to my heart, a great people, Kyle Andrews Foundation, and um, yeah, Saturday night down at the Netherlands Yacht Club. Nice. Good on you, mate. Yeah. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, JL, we were going to speak to you also, obviously, the Shield just took place and WA back-to-back and we've won six mm. domestic titles. Now, does Adam Vogue just rub it in your face that he was more <laughs> successful? Well, you got taken away from him. <laughs> yeah. Where do you land? Who's better? Oh, I'm so proud of him. I, 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 honestly, it's like watching my own boys and that includes Vogue because he was, yep. you know, played together. He was my captain and I was the coach and now he's the head coach. It's just I can't tell you. Like the Kyle Andrews Foundation, yep. it just makes me so happy to see the boys doing so well. So what a magnificent performance uh, to win all three titles in one year, but then to do it twice, yeah. it's just, uh, you know, what a family it is down at the Wacker and they're, uh, they're doing great things. And it's exciting with the Ashes coming up because yeah. well, I can't wait to see uh, who the selectors um, select for the Ashes. There should be a number of West Australian boys in there. It's the depth more than anything that's really hitting home this year because, you know, several of the players had to go, Mitch Marsh and Ashton Agar had to go off to international duties, but they, they just plug it with another brilliant player. It's extraordinary. Well, I'll just jump in quickly. Ashton Turner, we spoke yes. about him yeah. playing in the second grade before yes. he's come and man of the match, but that's how strong they are. Yeah, the unbelievable. Were. Well, there's one more point there as well. They're all West Australian. Yes. Oh, yeah. We so, haven't shipped anyone in. <laughs> yeah, and we did, about 10 years ago, the, the Wacker, we said, we're going to start picking all West Australian talent. And every now and then you get a couple come through for different reasons, for opportunities, but it's all West Australian talent. And, I, again, that's something to be really proud of, uh, that we're not going out. So a lot of the other states go out and they, they play other Kids from um, you know from outside of their own state, but when you're playing for your own, you know for WA, there's something really special about it, and I'm just so pumped to see them continue with that tradition and they're having success because of it. Now, JL, you stopped playing before the IPL situation mm. and all the crazy money. Um, <laughs> American League now, Nath. We talked yeah, about that's the other right. day. That must be fun. <laughs> um, I want to talk. How much do you reckon that J, JL would have pulled? Oh. Oh. See, see, what, what I'm hearing here is that I'm really bitter and twisted now <laughs> because, you know, we've got Vogues, he's flying, the team's yeah. flying. I've left in there. I've, you know, I've got no cash. I'm in the IPL. You've got no yeah. money. You've got no money. You have to go down and I knock know, on I'm your good. neighbour's door, Margaret Court, and ask yes. her for some money <laughs> from the collection <laughs> plate. Yeah, that's you... right. You know, my kids, got my kids out the front selling lemonade just so yes. they can put food on our yeah. table. Exactly. Without yeah. lemons, by no. the way, so it's just eight. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, you're, you're the equivalent of... Sean, who played yeah. football yeah. before yeah. proper football, mate, so, became so a thing as well. Sean, what do you think? What, 
what figures well, would JL have pulled back in the heyday if they were paying mm. what they were paying now? Well, obviously a million dollars would be a baseline. Oh, yeah, and a million just, dollars. So, he wouldn't walk out in the door yeah. for less then, than that. Yeah, but then he gets to play in all the other leagues around yes. the world. The West Indies have got a league. Uh, yes. Over in England, they've got their league. Bangladesh. Bangladesh, the yeah, American it's league. all around the world, yeah, that's yeah. right. There's this American league now that's going, imagine going there for two weeks just and getting paid buckets. So, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's yeah. happening all around the world. We've got to keep an eye on it, though, because yeah. international cricket is still important. Yes. Um, and we see domestic cricket, like we saw the Scorchers this year, West Australia. Um, so anyway, we've got to keep an eye on I've just got on this MCC World Cricket Committee for that very reason, just to make sure the health of the game uh, and the international game stays relevant. Hey, you just mentioned the Scorchers then, but how good was that BBL final? Oh, my God. It was oh, unbelievable, wasn't it? Two horrific the run pro- outs and then... The only problem with that was that I... I was commentating for seven, and this is a secret, which is no longer a secret. But I was with Ponting and my mates, and remember how hot it was on that day? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was yes. so flipping hot. It and I was. said, no, nah, no, nah, it's my first year commentating. I'll just keep my jacket on because they all just wore shirts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. My shirt was – and you can't say this on telly. My shirt was saturated. <laughs> so <I> was <laughs> and then they had a few run-outs. My shirt gets more saturated from yes. nerves. <laughs> So, yeah, but I was... So, wait, so you're you know. stuck. You can't take the jacket off because everyone no. can see how saturated the shirt is, but with the jacket on, you're boiling hot. <laughs> That's exactly right. How, how gross is that? Like, how disgusting is that? Did so, you just throw that jacket I'm, out? I'm starting to look all... I'm trying to look cool, and actually underneath, I'm going, mate, you're an idiot. Like, yeah. seriously. And then, and then Cooper Connolly came in and just went berserk, and that would have made you sweat even more. Yeah, he's a kid from Scarborough too, yeah. so I've known Cleaver since he was a little baby. So, no, it was so much. The Big Bash final was huge. I Wasn't mean, it? To, in front of a, another big crowd, Optus, which I'm sure they'll be at Optus this weekend for the Derby as well. But yep. being at Optus is just one of the great stadiums in the world. And then to see a contest like that, yeah, I mean, it's the best reality TV in the world, isn't it? <laughs> Life sport. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And Cameron Bancroft, while we've got you, Justin, I know you've spoken about him getting a Guernsey in the Australian lineup for this Ashes tour. And you just mentioned a second ago about who they would go with from the WA team. Um, and they should go with many, but can. Can the people over on the East Coast yes. get over? Can they get what on board with, with him? The They've got over story. the Warner yeah. and Steve Smith. Yeah. But... Mm. Well, I hope so. I, I honestly, I mean, he's he's paid his penance. He's done exactly what he had to do. Like, I think about guys like Ricky Ponting and Michael Clark and Matthew Hayden and Danny Martin. They all got dropped, and then they came back stronger and stronger. And that's what Cameron Bancroft's done. He's batting. You know, he deserves to be selected. He absolutely, and there's a him, Aaron Hardy. I, I mean, I can yep. see a day when, the, when Australia has Cameron Green, Aaron Hardy, and this young Will Sutherland from Victoria. Um, you know, that'd be an amazing combination of players. So there's so many good players around. Cameron Bancroft deserves to be picked on sheer rate of weight of runs. Yeah, he's improved his game out of sight. He's a great kid. And uh, I hope he gets selected. JL, um, have you been lining up to go and try and get a bottle of Prime? <laughs> a what? A bottle of Prime. A bottle of Prime. No, Are you oh. joking? Well, How have you, you missed the Prime no, Well, Well explosion. done for not knowing. That's great. He doesn't have young kids anymore. No, no but like, you don't need young kids. It's on the mm. news. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. That, 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 oh, I know. Logan Paul's <laughs> energy oh, drink. Oh, my. Man, I don't. I just love coffee. I just stick to the. Co- I just keep it simple, baby. Yeah. I just keep it nice. I'm and just simple. thinking because I'm worried nice about coffee. the fact that you didn't make any money from IPL, and it's like, well, why doesn't uh, JL have a, have a drink? Prime. Hey? Yeah, he could have a drink. He yeah, drink. Langerade or something. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I'm obviously so depressed because I made no money. I've got a better head coach in West Australia now. I might have to have put some, I don't know, some vodka in my prime and just to get me through each day. Yeah. What do you reckon? I mean, whatever it takes. Gee, <laughs> yeah. we've really talked yeah. you down. We do love you, by the way. And, uh, you've been an amazing sportsman across Australia. And you should get paid a lot <laughs> too, of money. Too little, too late, Sean. Have I saved I'm going all right, don't worry. I don't reckon I've got a bit of bone in my body, so we'll, we'll get that one clear. Yeah. I definitely don't put... Vodka or any in my what is it called prime, prime every day, and I'm probably the happiest bloke in the world. So don't, right. anyone out there is worried about me. I'm, I'm he's flying. Doing he's right. good. Right. He's good. I mean, uh, he lives in City Beach. He's okay. Yeah, okay. Well, we're coming over to check out the Bat Cave, by the way. Um, the Cole Andrews Foundation um, d- does amazing stuff. What you need to know is Saturday, the first of April, four thirty to nine thirty, Netherlands Yacht Club. Get behind them, everyone. They're building a respite centre and some accommodation for people to come down from the northwest, which is amazing. Love your work, JL. Thanks. 
And one more thing, guys. Yes. I believe you're going on holidays tomorrow. Uh, yeah, well, well, Sean's, Sean's going wow, today. Wow, actually, yeah. yes, exactly. There's a bit of tension there, I'm hearing. <laughs> There's a lot of tension. Have you, what do you reckon, Jay? I'm going away with Megan solo for the first time in forever. Do you reckon I'll survive? Mm-hmm. Good luck, baby. Good luck. <laughs> Two will leave, one will come back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nathan, just be a, be a good mediator there, mate. Okay, I know there's a bit of, bit of tension. Who's going on holidays first and all that sort of stuff? Enjoy. Enjoy. You work hard. Enjoy your holidays. Nathan guys. can't Have be the fun. mediator because he's furious. I'm furious. About it. <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you, are, you, are you kidding me? And Sean's taking Natalie's birthday That's off. That's right. I know. I don't oh, get my yeah, birthday Nat. off. Sean oh, no. gets my happy birthday, birthday off. Too. Thanks. Oh, Thanks. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. No, so just go solo, mate. Oh, mate, I did it during the pandemic. He did. He yeah, did solo go solo. Yeah, yeah. Nathan, no one, no that? one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let them both have the time. Nat can have a birthday. Sean can go to the oh. Maldives. And, and if if mate, JL says go it, go solo. Then okay, it's done. <laughs> All right. Thanks, JL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Oh, Nathan, solo, I don't want to know one tomorrow. We're giving away cartons of prime. <laughs> <laughs> cartons of prime to every caller. Right. I'm on. Nice and nobody and nobody. I'm on. See you. See you. See you. Time to catch up with the legend of the AFL, Bob Murphy. What a champion he's been. Of course, he is the head of football operations and performance at the Dockers. And that that's the first question I'm going to ask. Bob, what do they do? Operation, <laughs> performance. The performance isn't quite <laughs> hitting, sounds, hitting the notes at the moment. Sounds like you put on a show, Bob. Is that what happens? <laughs> well, that's exactly right. I don't know what you know about football clubs, guys, but they often they uh, they perform and they operate yeah. um, to, to, to varying degrees. And, look, I don't want to dodge the question at all, Sean, because I know, you know, we've got our backs to the wall at the moment. I have yes. had a bit of a title change, but just for, for argument's sake, yes. let's just go with the previous title but yeah it's been you certainly know you're alive um when you're in wa and uh working for the dockers and you're and you're zero and two so um yeah this uh this week is um is building up um to be a bit of a fever pitch and yep and um we can't wait like that's um this is what you live for in footy um to to answer the challenges so yeah we've certainly um yeah dug ourselves a little bit of a a bit of a hole early in the season but there's a long long way to go so we we feel like we feel like we've got the we've got the troops to to turn this thing around and uh, what better way to get it going than against the the eagles the old foe bob um we are if anything respected um, journalists, so we would like to actually get your new <laughs> title know, right. What, yes. what, what is your new title? <laughs> I'm I'm head of leadership development and AFLW. So yeah, quite it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, I prefer spiritual spiritual guidance. Yeah. Yes, yeah. just guru. Well, well, yeah, I, could not, guru. I did not hear the word yeah. performance there at all. Yeah. So yeah. It's, I mean, it's not his. It's not his yeah. problem. <laughs> That's right. I offered up head of vibe as well, but Peter head Bell, of vibe. He, he, he knocked that on the head and uh, so did the board, which is disappointing if I'm being honest. Now, now, Bob, I said to Sean yesterday, if a, te- if a footy team lost two games in a row in the middle of a season, no one would bat an eyelid. They say, why? What do you reckon the reason for the panic stations just because you've lost the first two this year? I, it's a very good point. I actually had a conversation uh, with one of my neighbours this week around that very thing. I think that I think it speaks to the power of the zero. The, the, the duck <laughs> the zero. When, when, when you when you're sort of stuck on anyone that's played any sort of level of cricket, when when you're on zero, it does everything is sort of magnified <laughs> a little bit. So we just need to get off the mark, um, and we're looking to do that against the Eagles this week. Hopefully, with a um, with a glorious cover drive. But you know what? Take a French cut this weekend. <laughs> oh, I would. I would. Um, Bob, uh, the thing about the media, which you brought up before, at the end of Adam Simpson's press conference when the Eagles won on the weekend, he made mention that if there's guys missing on the training track yes. or someone's just walking laps or whatever, you don't have to take a photo. It's part of the plan. You know, they're having a day off. Yep. It's not a big story about it. Are you finding it um, getting more and more... Um, Oh, I guess in the intense. intense about what they're trying to put out there. Uh, well, I suppose being a um, a former uh, Victorian mm-hmm. former, I, want, I just put that on the record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah, you're out I, now. It is. Yeah, it is kind. It is a bit of a learning curve, um, not just this week, but just in terms of you know the two team town and the you know and the ferocity of you know the, the interest in in footy over here, and it's. It's exciting, but it, it you can easily find yourself distracted and um, quite seriously. One of the one of the roles 
that I have and, and everyone in, in the footy club has at the moment. You, you want to give the players an even an even keel. You, you want to keep yeah. a, you know, a level of equilibrium with, with emotions and behaviour and, and, and effort because as soon as you start to ride the wave and start looking for things outside of the club and of your own planning and, and schedule... Um, I think that's when you can start. <laughs> you can start to lose your sea legs. If I could just crowbar another nautical thing <laughs> in there as well. So, and you um, did. <laughs> but, but, yeah. So, but really, that's all. We, we, you know, we, we'll have a look at the Eagles and, and what they've what they've done in the first couple of rounds, and, and you know they've they've been pretty impressive, particularly last week. So they'll they'll be up for it. We know that. That's the that's the tradition of of Derby. You know that all too yeah. well, Sean. So. Um, we have to get our own backyard in order, really. So, um, you know, when you're zipping two, it's probably more about um, what we what we can put our effort into, probably more so than than um, looking across the across the park to, to to the other mob. Now, Bob, I'm no Docker supporter, but oh, I geez, need to ask because I thought this was disgusting the way that the West treated Luke Jackson during the week. He's a 21 year old. So Sean Darcy, it's only, like it's only his second game mm. for the club. Um, and the you know the stuff that the no action Jackson stuff that they put the, the whole mm. back page about him is he okay? How's he doing? Yeah, no. Anyone that that knows Luke, he's um, very um, very balanced, relaxed um, young man. Um, we're so excited to have him. Um, he's had a bit of a bumpy start to the season, but he's he's we're a collective, and um, you know we throw our arms around him to protect. You know, all of our players from from that sort of noise. Um, I mean, it did rhyme, Action Jackson. I think yeah. they probably had that headline. Yeah, yeah. they had it for a but while. I mean, when, when they put a value yeah. on how much each mark has been worth, you go, come yeah. on, that's yeah, just that's, that's a, a low point. Yeah, it, it, it does feel like a bit of low hanging low yeah. hanging fruit, but that, that is, that's just the that's the atmosphere that um, yeah that that footy um, encapsulates these days, and whether. Whether that floats your boat or not, oh, there's another nautical. Um, <laughs> Bring the bell. Really, You've really taken to really being in the really, port town, haven't you? Yeah, it's really, it's really up to the beholder. So I must admit, I don't sort of buy into that too much, and I don't think many of our players do it. You do have to sort of take it with a take it with a grain of salt. Uh, now, I would like to know what your opinions on of the performance this year of Sean Darcy because he has joined our mm, team as mm. well, and we know mm. that the West love the rhyme, and we're waiting for him to do something amazing because the title Arcy yeah. Darcy is yes, just or, waiting to be written. or something bad because the Darcy fast <laughs> yeah, works too. Yes. Yes. Darcy, yes. Yes. A, yeah, so yeah. has he, well, has he I, come into his own? Do you see? Because like you know, do, is he riding off our success? Well, we know he's a, a during consummate his, barbecue you know, host yes. struggle. Yes, so well. I was I was about to say actually that I suppose I'll answer this question in three parts. The first one being Sean, the footballer, and obviously Sean has a huge influence and he's a big man and and he's, you know he's a he's a sort of a bit of a fire starter for us in the middle of the ground because he's such a big man, yes. plays with such a physical presence. The other thing is I, I notice he's brought in a little a little uh, a bit of a, a cheeky little mullet hairdo, which yes. is, yeah. is just keep an eye on it. It's 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 getting longer, yeah. and I think he thinks he's getting away with it, but I've noticed that it's right. getting longer. Oh, and, and I suppose we could be that, stumbling into Nick that, Nolte territory yeah, here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it is. It, and, and, and I suppose the third part of this is he's, He's off field antics, and I mean, I don't know if you guys were invited to the barbecue, but I no, know I no, was. We were, don't actually. bring it up, Bob. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to create another headline in the West Australian that you know that, that's sort of sparking you know infighting at Frio. But to be honest. About Sunday, furious. Well, well, you didn't get invited. Uh, right? Well, I didn't get invited. We didn't get invited. And I and 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 why wouldn't you invite me? We already know on my headstone it'll be BYO sausage. Yes, and, <laughs> but but you didn't get get a Guernsey either, Bob. Don't Google that. Yeah, and well, yeah. I mean, I've only I've only been here for eighteen months, and yeah, um, you know, no had no plan. You know, still feel yeah. like. Um, like one of the one of the new kids and you're in the town. Boss of vibe. So, mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So I mean yeah. I would have thought, you know, that would have been a perfect what you, role. What do you have to do? Yeah. The barbecue. Yeah. So yes. I Sean Furious. Yes. Well, I, well if you want to take him down a peg or two, I don't know if you've had a proper look at him, give him a once over, put him up on, you know, like over the pits. But um when Sean first joined our team, I, I gave him a good look over and yeah. his hands aren't in proportion to his body. They're they're, they're smaller than enough. what they should be. Mm. 
So, they're, so are they? Are they? Sorry, I just missed that. Like, are they bigger or no? Smaller? They're smaller, smaller than what they should be. Oh, My right. hands How? are um are, are probably just a little bit smaller than his, and his should be way bigger than mine. That's a good point. Yeah, that, that's so. uh, that's actually scandalous, isn't it? I, <laughs> and and I'm sh- and I'm sure Adam Simpson will probably be using this in. in his, um, well, I mean, has he dropped the ball of late? <laughs> Wow. Oh, sore well, point. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, that's quite a difficult one for us to um, to combat and coach him with. I mean... What, to get his hands hand bigger? Size, <laughs> your, 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 hand size, your, your, your hand size is your hand size, isn't it? I mean, JL is a bloody good coach, but I don't know if there's much you can do about the mitt size of Sean. I thought you were going to have a winner's attitude and try yeah. anything this year. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. It sounds like you're no, lying you, down. No, you get wrong. No, that's, that's all. That's you're all. in charge of leadership, that's, Bob. Is this what we call right, leadership? Yeah. Well, it's authenticity. You know, you guys are... It's about being real, guys. Come on, try and keep up. (laughs) Bob's always a great pleasure catching up. I hope you're enjoying WA. And we'll invite you to our barbecue. Of course we will. Yes. We'll have a little four barbecue. I like it. Yes, we will. I'll put one sausage and two rissoles aside for you. (laughs) (laughs) I think he's hung up. (laughs) I love you, Greg. Thank you, guys. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.